Justin King has today announced his departure from the chief executive position at Sainsbury. That's a job he's held for the past 10 years. And he leaves at a difficult time for the UK's supermarkets. Sales over Christmas overall weren't good, although Sainsbury's did better than most. All of the supermarkets have been hit by the rise of the hard discounters such as Aldi and Lidl, but also by the difficult economic environment. We asked Mr King about this when we spoke to him recently. For the vast majority of people, the 30 million or so people that are in work, were in work a year ago, the reality for them is that they've got less money left over at the end of the week than they did a year ago. Average wages are up below the rate of inflation. And so from their perspective, whilst I'm sure, uh, like me, they'd say it's good to hear good news, it's not yet their reality. And so if what flows from that question is a question about whether um, there's good news in a growing economy for, say, a retail business like ours, uh, the answer has to be not yet, because the average customer whom we serve every week has got less money today than they did a year ago. So difficult times for Sainsbury's and indeed all of the UK's supermarkets. But that was also true when Mr King took the helm 10 years ago. And in the intervening period, he's not done such a bad job with Sainsbury's. Profits have grown nicely year on year since then, and he's made the right strategic choices. He's pushed into convenience stores, for example, and into online, and he's avoided the difficulties faced by some of his rivals, notably Tesco. He's not gone into large hypermarkets, which are very much out of fashion at the moment, and he's not gone into overseas adventures either. I asked my colleague Matthew Vincent about his views on Mr King's time at the top. Justin King is in many ways the Tony Blair of British retail. He wants his legacy to be a 10-year turnaround story. He took over from discredited former management when they couldn't even get the food onto the shelves and delivered 36 consecutive quarters of growth. Lots of investment too in what the, the voters, the shoppers seem to want, which is more convenience, retailing. And now, at the end of the period, uh, Sainsbury's is in much better shape. Shareholders in Jay Sainsbury have reason to be pleased with Mr King's time at the top. Over the 10 years, the total shareholder return, that's any increase in the share price plus any dividends, was 100% at Jay Sainsbury. That's better than it was at either Tesco or William Morrison, its two UK-based rivals, although it's not quite as good as the FTSE 100 overall delivered. The challenge for his successor, Mike Coop, is to deliver the same kind of return, and that's going to be difficult in a very competitive UK grocery market. For Mike Coop, who takes over from him, there's still an awful lot to do. Christmas sales not as good as expected, margins being squeezed, the legacy may not be as golden as it you know, initially seems. So discounters are playing their part in this incredible change in shopping behaviour, which is people doing slightly smaller weekly grocery shops and then topping up whenever is most convenient to them. That might be in a convenience store, it might be in a discounter, or it might be in the grocery store up the road, but they'll spend the money in two shops. And that's reflecting itself in the fact that most of the growth is happening in those smaller retailers in uh, closer to home, more convenient locations. Our own convenience business uh, in Sainsbury's grew at 18% in the last quarter. Of course, that compares very favourably with the discount sector growing at around uh, 20%. So they're another part of the competitive mix, but they're not new. I think the first discount has opened in the UK 30 uh, years ago. The trick will be for Mike Coop to keep paying the dividend, which is a yield of 5% at the moment, which is pretty attractive, and to keep the share price moving forwards gradually, as Mr King's been able to do for most of his time at the top. Oliver Ralph, Financial Times, London.